right. Hello, T Quilters. <laughs> it's it's been a day. So let me get myself signed up here trying to my te television. I cut the cable off, but the television didn't cut off. So <laughs> I had some white noise in here while I was trying to get set up. So I couldn't get in here earlier. Um, we just got lifted from a tornado warning in our area for the last hour or so. And so now we just have some thunderstorms. So if you hear something in the background, that's exactly what that is. Um, and I haven't been in here, <laughs> so I'm trying to get myself set up because I couldn't come in here. So let's do that. Let me put some oil in this machine. I cleaned it earlier today because I was using it and I ran out of pre-wound bobbins. I'd wind about 10 to 12 bobbins at a time. And so I ran out today, so I have been sewing before all of this mess happened. <laughs> so I'll talk about that as I sew and chat. All right. Something to cut this. So give me just a minute. Move this over. I need to have that phone in case we get more warning notifications. <laughs> All right. Let's see. My desk is a mess because as I said, I've been sewing and I didn't even get a chance to clean up the stuff that I was working on prior. So let me go, I always get out of chat and then go back in once I go live because it just works better for me for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why. So thank you, Darcy, for welcoming everybody into the chat and for letting them know to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. So really would appreciate if you all hit the thumbs up button. Um, let me start from the beginning. I'm T with T Quilts. Today is Saturday, April 15th. It is 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here for live sewing chat. It goes for two hours. Um, I'm going to be working on the Boho Heart pieces. I'm gonna be sewing some of those together, some of the sections together. Um, I... Also, we'll just chat a little bit about how my week has been going as I'm sewing. And so uh, when you're commenting, if you want me to know what you're working on, go ahead and put it in the chat. It normally takes me about 15, 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes to get through the intro comments because <laughs> I'm late. It's a lot more people were in here earlier, too. So I'm hoping that we can get through this pretty fast. So here we go. <laughs> uh, Kenneth Shaw M saying hi, everyone. Melissa LePage is here. Good evening, T and everyone. Vivian Calvies. If you're just saying hi, I'm going to just call your name. <laughs> That'll make it a little bit easier. And Tantrum from New Zealand. Judy Hebert from Georgia. Not Now Design says, I hope you're safe from the storms, T. Yes. And that's what we've been going through. It. Uh, we had, it just come, it came pretty sudden because we had a pretty nice day yesterday and one today too. So, um, it got dark really fast. Then we had rain. Uh, the tornado warning was all over this particular area going into Illinois. And then we also now have um, high winds with thunderstorms or tornado warnings and lightning and stuff like that. So that's what we're dealing with now. 
but at least it's not a tornado warning right now. So that's good. Um, they had some hail on the other side of town. We didn't get that. I don't think I didn't hear hail. So, um, so right now things are good. If I lose power, you know why <laughs> uh, my iPad is uh, hooked up to my Wi-Fi. So if we lose any of that and we crash, you all know why we crash. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Damali J saying good evening. Um, Brent's paid. So thank you, Damali. Rochelle Sears. Betsy Layton. Um, Blackbird 022. Craft with Love 55. Judy Smith. Francis Jackson. Melinda Montoya. Maddie Barnum. Uh, Brenda Perkins, <laughs> Dee Dee Hansen. She says, good afternoon, T from Fiji. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Have fun, girl. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> um, guess who, Nancy? Sandy Agar. Handmade by Yang with Donna. Uh, she also has a channel, if you don't know about Donna's channel. Uh, Mary Lee Blackwell saying hello to all. Janice Miller, Brenda Foley, like so, like that. She says, praying for everyone that families are doing well. Wait a minute. Oh, that was Dee Dee from in Fiji. Fiji. I'm thinking that was Dee Dee Hansen. <laughs> and then down below is Dee Dee Hansen, who's here from Michigan. That's what the one I was expecting. So welcome, Dee Dee, to the channel because I don't remember seeing your name before. So, so sorry about that. But I thought it was Dee Dee Hansen from Michigan that was in Fiji. <laughs> so I appreciate you commenting. That's really nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Teresa Lynch. Uh, thank you, Donna. Sending up prayers. Elaine Doucette. She says, I'm way up north and it's too hot, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the thing. I think because we've had days where we've had 80s, all of a sudden, I knew this was coming. We've had about the last three days have been 80s and sunshine. Uh, Sue GSD is here. Darcy says, iPad is, is poopy on purpose. <laughs> Sheila Willis, um, Mini Doula, welcome to the channel. She says, hello, team, my first time joining your live chat. I seen you use your hand press and was glad to find them on your site. Can't wait to receive it. I just saw your order come in. Um, most times I uh, post stuff within 24 hours. If it gets in most of the time by noon, it goes out most times the same day unless some crisis happens. So I'll be sending out your orders on Monday. You should be getting confirmation via a ship station PayPal, via PayPal, um, that your order has shipped when it's shipped. So I appreciate that, and thank you so much. I had um, quite a few wood press and um, stiletto combo sets um, that sold today. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Dee Dee Hansen says, really hot in Michigan. We get the bad weather. You are sending our way later tomorrow night. Yeah, because I think that's what starts it. We, in St. Louis, we hardly ever have what we consider to be spring. We tend to go from winter straight into summer. And then this is what happens. <laughs> Sue says, 437 days until the party starts. So that's uh, the next quilt retreat that I'm having. I still haven't received any information from them. I just find it very bizarre that you can't give retreat prices a year away, a year and a half away, two years away when you used to have a chart that was 10 years out. <laughs> so it's kind of weird to me. Um, but, you know, I'll try to contact back again, see if the lady has come back from off a of sick leave. She had went on sick leave. So I hope everything went well with that. I haven't heard anything back from her. Uh, Bonita Nance is here. Kevin Aquilter is here. Uh, Beth Dixon. 
saying that she lost her quilting mojo if found sent to DC. <laughs> uh, quilts by Carmel has a channel saying, hey, Miss T and T quilters. Um, let's see. People saying hi to everybody else. I kind of skipped those. Janice Wyatt says, hello. Hey, everyone from Alabama. So welcome, uh, Janice, to the channel. Appreciate that. Her name sounds familiar. Either she ordered something or she posted or mentioned something in Facebook or something. Something. She either got into the tea quilts group or something. So that name's familiar. <laughs> but welcome to the live chat. Uh, T. Roberts is here. Um, I got, I think I responded, sent you an email. I need to, I'll send that. My, that happened right before the storms were coming in. So I do need to forward that for you. I will do that. Oh, Darcy says that she likes putting the comment up for me. I, and I really appreciate it because I never think to type it ahead of time so I can have it and just cut and paste it over. It just never have seemed to work. As many uh, years we've been doing this uh, to the Saturday Live Sewing Chat since 2020, and I still can't figure out how to get the thing typed up before I come live, because then I've done it a couple of times, and guess what I do? I go and copy something else and lose it, and then forget all about it. <laughs> I need to make a note and put it in a note or something, but Darcy does a very good job, <laughs> uh, so I appreciate that. I don't care whether it comes from me or Darcy. She's uh, the one that does most of my posts about hitting the thumbs ups and things like that, so I really, really appreciate that. Uh, people are saying hi to Minnie, so you all are sweet. Uh, Teresa McCormick's here. Uh, your birthday's coming up this week, I think. I think I said your birthday in April. Uh, today is Peggy O'Connor's uh, birthday. I haven't even been on Facebook to tell her happy birthday. I'm I'm behind. I, my best friend was in town uh, Friday. We went to a Cardinals game. Um, well, one of my best friends. I have. Uh, very good friends. Um, and sh she was actually in my wedding, as a matter of fact, too. But we went to a Cardinals game and they actually won on her birthday. So that was really nice. We were trying to get a ball for her birthday. They did not hit one ball into our section. So I thought the section, we were kind of in center field. And I thought that we might get a ball out that way if somebody hit a home run. There was not one home run hit all night. Uh, my screen just jumped for some reason. So now I got to go back and find where I left off. <laughs> um, lightning, thunder, and still rumbling. Yes, that's what you're hearing in the background. If you hear anything, that's what that is, just in case. Uh, Betsy saying they had pea size to one half inch hail. And I know they said like certain areas had like um, ping pong size hail. So I was glad that didn't make it across town. Uh, Diane 57 is here saying hi to you and everyone. Jay Kinlan says, hey, everybody. Joyce here from Alabama. Jeanette's here. <laughs> You're welcome, Donna. Like so like that says clean long arm and working on home and a way pattern. Dee Dee saying, don't I wish I was in Fiji. <laughs> um, Remo says, good evening, Miss T and Quilters. Thumbs up, everybody. So thank you, Miss Remo. Welcome to the chat. Jason Lewis is here. Hoping all that were in this storm's path is staying safe and dry. So, yeah, that's the next thing we got to worry about, making sure uh, nothing floods when it starts raining like this. So, Kim R is here. Hey, Kim. Says, good evening, quilters. Jackie Jones. Uh, um, I think I read uh, Michelle the Quilter saying, hi, T. Good evening, everyone. with love saying t is my birthday 
I didn't, I don't have you, if I don't think I have you on my list, because I didn't say your birthday on April's live chat, did I just happen to uh, come across the list this morning? And I was seeing that it was a lot of people's birthdays this week. It started uh, the 15th through like the 17th, 18th, 19th, something like that. But I don't remember seeing your name on there, Larissa. So happy birthday. Saying she's a young 59. It was supposed to have been raining the whole weekend here in Chesapeake, Virginia. But I asked the good Lord and he gave me a beautiful day on my birthday. Now that's sweet. <laughs> It's nice. So happy birthday to you. Uh, and I'm not going to sing the birthday song, Kevin, so you don't have to go away. <laughs> Becky Bramlett is here saying, just got out of the shower. I'm squeaky clean and was happy to see you were on. Yes. I didn't know if I was going to make it on. So. Um, people are saying happy birthday to Craft with Love. That you all are so nice. <laughs> you all are so nice. Um, fixing to go back to crocheting while you do your thing. That's Becky. All right. So thank you for taking time to pop a comment in. I appreciate that. Claudette Bettis is here. Kevin says, I will sing it. It's magic. It's your birthday. It's magic. It's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, he hates when I sing that song. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I forgot to even bring water to put in my iron in here because my bottle is almost empty. Um, again, for new people here, I currently am in the process of working with a sew alone group that's a private group you had to have bought your book for me or you can pay to get into the group if you already have a book but we're working on the boho hearts by jen kingwell and we are slated to be finished the end of july i think and uh so what i'm doing i'm not giving any cut instructions about these blocks matter of fact most of these blocks that i'm showing you are not even in the quilt the majority of them because I didn't want duplicate uh, blocks, especially the large ones being duplicate. So I have been making my own blocks. So I'll make the same block in a different size, but I wouldn't make two of the same size block, if that makes sense. So she had a lot of duplicate blocks that she wanted us to make, and I just wasn't feeling that. I actually love making sampler quilts. So making, it was over a hundred blocks in this quilt. So it was fun to try to come up with different things that I could do to make those blocks. So that's currently what I'm going to be sewing on. Um. <laughs> Jason says now he likes the song. brother just came in saying hi sis and everyone got to see him today he's dropping off taxes you know this week i got so much stuff to do right now i don't know when i'm gonna get them done we'll see i got one thing that i well let me talk about what i have been doing since we last were live wednesday because i tend to catch you all up half week um uh, mona did what is here <laughs> um I, on Thursday, I finished some of the background piecing and cutting so that I could finish today. There are a couple things in the last section that I haven't done. And if I don't get to that part, that's fine. Uh, because this cutting board here is not big enough to um, uh, cut the pieces. And I never did go to a different cutting board to get it cut. So I have some pieces ready to go. We'll see how far I got. I get. It's okay if I don't get very far. Um, so that was Thursday. Friday, I actually had I had one customer that was ordering stuff via text message, a local person, and then I had somebody else that I was emailing. We were talking about uh, her getting coming to see what I had and stuff like that. 
And I have a lot of African print fabrics. And so what I did was I just pulled out some of it because <laughs> I'm like, there is no way I'm going to pull this out because I, I know everybody has a budget. I'm not saying they not going to spend a lot of money. I'm saying everybody has budget at some point. So I probably had out over a thousand dollars worth of product. I got a lot more product than that. However, I just pulled out a table full of stuff for them to look at. And they were surprised by how much I had just pulled out for that. I only pulled out two containers for that. And so they actually uh, shopped. Um, and I, I mean, they did a really good job of buying stuff. It was worth it for me to pull it out. And it was actually fun, though, too. And then because of COVID and uh, some of the ladies not coming to the Gill meetings anymore, things like that, it was just nice to sit down and actually chat with. Uh, people, <laughs> you know, like, like we used to, and we did it all outside on my deck. And, um, so it was fun. Um, very fun day. So I did that Friday morning, uh, because I go to, I did that early Friday morning. So I had to get up like eight to prepare for that. And then I don't know why I took these out. I don't even need them right now. I need them in the next section, I guess. <laughs> um. I went to St. Louis Cardinals baseball game with my friend. She always, she lives in Atlanta, but she actually always comes back in doing spring, well, the opening in April of baseball. And she always likes to attend her first baseball game being St. Louis Cardinals, even though she's been in Atlanta now for over 20 years, she still is a St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan. <laughs> so uh, she always come back here to do her first uh, ball game of the year. And it's her birthday being in April as well. So we always tend to do something together. So we had fun. We went out to dinner first and then we went to the baseball game. So we had good fun with that. So I enjoyed that. I hadn't been to a game. I don't know. I can't even remember if I went last year with her or if it was two years. I can't remember if it was 2021 or 2022 that I went to a ball game. So. That was good. And they won. So that was fun. <laughs> so, yeah, that. Let's see who else has come in. Celia Swain. Uh, Craft would love saying thank you all for her birthday wishes. Lady Crafts is here. Hello. Welcome to the channel as well. Um, Diane 57. I took all wrenches away from people that weren't in the chat actively um, monitoring my site. Are you wanting your wrench back? Just let me know. I, I actually took them away if you weren't in my chats anymore. And so I was uh, trying to get new people that were here to stop people from or pre help prevent the trolls when they come in. So I'm like, if you've got a wrench, I took them away if you weren't here. So you need to try to make it into the chats. I do know that people's interests change. I understand that. So it, it wasn't anything personal. And um, I will give you the wrench back. Okay, Diane, you can check it. So I don't want anybody to be offended when you come in and your wrench is taken if you're not actively greeting people or actively. And I see she's in here and she is greeting people. But if you're not here, I can't you're not helping me and my channel. And then I have to go out and start looking for new moderators if people weren't here. So I went through and took away wrenches from people that weren't in here and then gave wrenches to people that were in here. So uh, nothing personal on that. It's just more of a business thing. Have to keep stuff moving. <laughs> I, and I'm not offended being a YouTuber when I go into other people's chats and I'm not one of their moderators. You know, I don't get offended by that because I am so busy and have so much going on with me having no assistance. I know other YouTubers have other people that assist them. I have no one to assist me with what I do. So, you know, my time and stuff like that is very valuable so i don't have a whole lot of it to spare and then with also now having a grandbaby so trying to spend some time um you know 
with that because when they're babies, you need to make sure you're seeing them at least once a week um, so they don't forget who you are. <laughs> you know, then when you have to babysit, you've got a screaming child because they're missing their mom and don't know who you are. So I'm trying to make sure that if it comes a time where I have to babysit, you never know what's going to happen in somebody's life uh, where I have to be watching my granddaughter for a period of time when my daughter is unavailable or something. So I'm trying to make sure that if if that should happen, I'm not hoping for that to happen, but should that happen, I want this kid to know who I am. <laughs> so, um, all right, Diane, thank you. <laughs> um, Mona says grandbabies are the best, right? Sandy's also reminding people to hit the thumbs up. Uh, uh, Sue is telling Donna to tell her table mate. It says table wear, but she means they table mate. Uh, Tucker, hi. <laughs> um. So yeah, so it's a lot uh, going on with that. Now, what have I been doing today? Because <laughs> I told you all I was sewing today. I have been working with, I'm not working with, I'm not working with anybody. I have been working in my uh, studio today because So Creative Lounge had a, ha, is hosting this weekend, the whole weekend. I missed yesterday because of the game, um, but they're hosting this weekend uh, online classes, you know, whether it be a Zoom, it's still online. And so I've been involved in that as far as an attendee. I am not on their uh, teaching schedule or anything like that. I don't even know, you know, I don't keep up with a whole lot of stuff and I barely know who the instructors are. Uh, some of them I'm starting to remember their names from repetitive uh, sightings, especially since I went to QuiltCon in Atlanta. So I'm starting to get to know who people are. Uh, I just don't know them. <laughs> so it's all, I've, I've been sitting in uh, Zoom meetings, um, Zoom lectures, Zoom classes. So I've been having a good time. I, uh, I've been writing down instructions or, you know, notes on the projects that they're working on. I did start one project, but the storm came and then I wasn't able to finish that. Uh, but they're pretty quick and easy projects. So, yeah. I've been doing that all day. And then it's also tomorrow as well. So that's what I've been working on. I can't move the paper because I need the paper to sew, Dee Dee. I need the paper. If I don't have the paper, there will be no sewing. I'll show you my sections as I sew them, um, but I most definitely need the paper. <laughs> and I can't stick it behind because this is the knob right here. So, sorry. I'll show you the sections as I, when I sew the section together. I'm not actually giving out measurements anyway, but I will be sharing that. On my blocks, as I'm showing these, I've shown you all the blocks in, in last week in the live and the week before in the live. I showed you all, all the blocks that I made. All I had to do this time was piece some of my background strips. And so uh, that's what I did off camera. And now I'm ready to put some units together. I am not, again, giving out any measurements to this. Did I thread this? It's not stitching. Okay. I had to, I pulled my thread out and cut the bobbin. So maybe it's resisting the cut bobbin. I cut the bobbin because it was hanging out. This Bernina plate is so tight that if you have a piece of thread in it, it won't pull the thread out. But it looks like my bobbin's not picking up. Let me see if I can back stitch just to make sure it's not, it's not stitching. So I'm gonna have to re-put my bobbin in. 
now that I got the plate on. And I'll just rethread the whole machine. Sometimes that's just best. Stuff gets knocked out of the tension. Come on, pop out of here. <laughs> I can't. It's like a blind spot because I got my light on, so I can't really see. It's like it's... All right. We got to take the tray off. I don't know why this bobbin's not popping out of here. It's like it's stuck. Hmm. I don't think it's turning. Or it's, it's not supposed to turn. I don't know what's holding it in here. Is it a, the thread wrapped around it, maybe? <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to take the whole thing out. <laughs> Just to get the bobbin out. I see the little thread now. I can't get the bobbin out. Um, another piece of fabric that goes with a different project. So I'm going to see if it sews with me just getting the bobbin thread pulled up. We'll worry about that later. I just took that bobbin out and <laughs> replaced it. I <laughs> so I don't know what's up with that. This is what happens, especially when you're sewing live. <laughs> And, you know, this stuff happens to people at home. And I don't, I'm glad when stuff like this happens so that, you know, it happens to everybody and it's not just you. I'm trying to see if it's sewing. It looks like it is. I kind of heard the bobbin reset itself. So that's good. Make sure my iron is still on. Hi, yo, Patty G. <laughs> Let's see who else came in while I was messing with this. <laughs> uh, Donna, to my left and I lie, we are both here watching and learning from the queen of quilting. <laughs> Did you finish your crown royal quilt? I can't, I don't know what I want to do with the borders. And so I just said, you know what? You got to piece this boho hard. So go ahead and do that. So I just took a little slight detour. I'm still not sure, but I think I'm just going to keep it simple. Add a couple of inner borders, small ones, and then all the crown royal backs. I'm just going to sew them all together into, I'm going to cut them into the same size width, I think, and then just sew them together. I don't even know if I'm going to put any other fabric in between. You know how our ancestors sometimes would make their own fabric by just sewing uh, smaller chunks together. So I'm thinking if I cut everything the same width and just sew it together, maybe that'll work. I could also add in a little bit of the purple or the yellow, like a cut one inch strip or something. I could do that in between the pieces. So I haven't decided yet, but I, uh, the first step would be cutting. So we'll be doing that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess what I'm going to do is I have blocks on top and bottom Sect I have two sections on the board, I think. And so I'm in order not to destroy the whole board and don't know where stuff goes. I think what I'll do is I will. Sew some stuff from section one and section two <laughs> as chain piecing so I can get my section one piece off. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh.
All right. So this is like a little log cabin block that I made and then a, a string and crumb block, which she didn't have any of those in here. And I think I made one in at least four different sizes, like maybe a two inch, a four inch, a six and an eight or something. So I have been uh, utilizing the um, crumb block. So as I'm cutting and creating all of these little pieces, I decided to go ahead and make string and crumb blocks. That's what I've been chain piecing on. That's the stuff that's in this little tray here. So I'm trying to utilize as much fabric as I can, not throw too much of it away. Although, you know, I got enough fabrics to make about 300 quilts <laughs> and that's no joke <laughs> that is no exaggeration sadly so and this one's going to go up against the block that's so i'm going to press this one to the other way because i know where it's going and that seems going to, to the right so we'll pass this one to the left um move the paper we cannot see your quilt board i'll show you my pieces this is what i just sewed like i said i've shown all of these blocks and i will show you the sections when i complete the section so they won't be a mystery for long and since i'm not doing any um And since I'm not doing any um, measurements, it's not gonna matter too much anyway. I'm trying to make sure I got so much stuff in here. I got my phone I'm trying to put over here because I need it in case they give us another warning. Now I'm trying to put my cup. <laughs> All right, so. I'm basically just sewing pieces together. And then when I get the section sewed or get them big, I'll show you the section. So that's what's gonna be happening with this. Uh, Minnie says, I love it when my grand, my grands call out for me. That's nice. <laughs> yes. And I said, I want this child to know who I am because it would be horrible to have a kid that's crying for a long period of time because they don't know who you are. They may not be they still looking for their mom or dad, but it's nice that they know who you are. So, so yeah. Lady Crab says, awesome classes at So Creative Lounge Virtual Quilting Conference. Yes. That's where I was. All right. So, I'm basically just... Instead of chain piecing like lots of things, I'm just gonna be working on one or two seams at a time. So that's how it's gonna be today. Um, and I got a partial seam here because I messed up and sewed two pieces together. And I could have like, you know, after the fact I realized like, girl, you could have like taken the pieces apart, but you know, I sewed it anyway. <laughs> And I could have ripped out two and a half inches of sewing to prevent a partial seam, but no. <laughs> I guess I love a challenge. I got a fingernail that's pulling. It's got caught on a maybe a pin or something. And we definitely don't want it to pull and go cray cray. <laughs> So let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out which is the best way to do this. Are you six inches? Yeah, we'll put this one on first. We'll put this one on first. Now, I was sewing last Saturday and I posted my pictures and then Kevin goes and says, I think something's wrong with your quilt. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I didn't even see it, but I had a couple of sections switch 
with each other and I had to go in there and pluck them out of there to get it. That's what happens when you're doing sewing chat. <laughs> you're so busy chatting, talking, uh, trying to keep up with everything, uh, coordinating stuff. So yeah, I had a big mess. <laughs> All right. So I got this one on there. This one now needs to go on here. So I had to do some ripping. See, Joy Creations is here. Uh, Diane saying she's been in Zoom Monday through Thursday. I don't know how people do it because after a while I was getting bored and it wasn't because of the instructors because I wasn't used to sitting there and I was looking at it on my iPad. I'm glad I have an iPad Pro. So it was the bigger model. But still, I was like, I can't do it. And then all the chats that pop up, I kept trying to figure out how can I cut off all these chats from popping up because I didn't want to see them. But I saw no controls for me to do that. So, um, you know, when you got a lot of people in a Zoom meeting and the chats keep coming up, it was a, and they come up on your screen. It's not like you have a, I could put it to the side. It kept coming up in the screen and then I had my iPad battery ran down. So then I had to go use my phone while my iPad charged because I'm like, girl, you better charge this iPad so you can <laughs> have your live tonight. So then I had to switch to my phone and it was so little on there and the comments was really taking over the screen. I was like, good Lord. But I don't know how people do Zooms all the time. At least, uh, you know, on the YouTube platform, you can put them to the side and then you can still have your screen that's clear. Well, not with that one. All right. Yeah, this was much better way to put this together. <laughs> uh, I think I got one seam matching. See, Joy Creations is here saying, glad she made it tonight. So welcome to the live chat. T says, really enjoyed the woman from Cali, the hand quilter. Yeah, she has some really interesting things and the things that she had been doing with denim for so long. I was so surprised at how many outfit type things she had made and was act actually wearing. And it's funny because I have a pair of jeans that are my favorites and they had they were kind of like the distressed jeans that they were talking about, uh, uh, saying they were trying to sell them that type of fabric. And then that also, when you're having distressed fabric, that means that's where the first sign of wear and tear starts. So I had them on the thighs of my jeans. And then I went and started putting hearts on mines. And I did the, um, what is the Japanese? Um, uh, stitching. I did that with denim because I do have some of it here. Let me see where it's at. I probably pulled this one bag out of here and have an avalanche. Okay. <laughs> I'm in my PJs too. <laughs> I went to the post office and came right back home and put on my pajamas. Okay. Knew I wasn't going anywhere else. Um... But I have done quite a few blocks and I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with them yet, but I'm just making the blocks. And so when I was doing these, I've been doing this maybe since 2018 or 19 before COVID um, hit. I had I had helped a lady vend at the quilt shows and she sells this. And so I got some from her and then I got those done and then I went on Amazon and start buying stuff just so I could get it quicker because the patterns that I wanted, she was out of stock on. So I went and got more, but this is the one that I'm currently working on now. And it is, this one is called Sayagata, uh, this particular pattern. But I really like this. So I had did this with 
other old denim on my jeans to save them. And so it was really nice that she had even used old quilts and colorful pieces that she used, to, uh, even pieces from the quilts that she had put into her, <laughs> on her jeans and clothing. And she even done it for mending too. That was what was so funny. And she just decked the whole thing out. I think I covered about three spaces, you know, the third thing, do it in odd numbers. I had one bad spot, so I covered three spaces. Um, and I really, I still wear those jeans. I like them. And I, <laughs> um, I like that when I look down, I put a heart just so that, you know, something that can make you smile. You never know when you might need a hug or something. You out, somebody acting crazy. <laughs> and uh, you look down and you can do some self-soothing. <laughs> So I put a heart on mine, and then the rest of them were rectangles. The other two were rectangles because I didn't do a whole lot because I knew, um, you know, I was just fixing my jeans. I'm like, these jeans are not going in the trash. I don't know why this is having a hard time lining up. I, it lined up in my hand. All right. We're going to make it work, though. <laughs> uh, hopefully. Uh, Maddie's still working on Bold Heart, but it's slow. Maddie says, I like your T-shirt, T, very pretty. Ooh. Oh, this is a Bob Marley shirt I've had for a long time. I don't even know where I got this one from. It's an old one. All right. I don't know. Oh, it's turned the wrong way. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why this is not matching up. <laughs> we almost, I think, got section two done. If there's nothing else that goes underneath it. So this is the last scene for number two. So let's sew this. I haven't read the next comment to talk. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can get caught up here. Howdy, friends. We finally got some rain. That's Mary. Um, she's in Kansas, I think. Um, I got Patty. Uh, four days until vacation, but who's counting? That's Sue. I'd be counting. Uh, Darcy is reminding people to check to see if you've hit your thumbs up button. So thank you. Bernie is already acting up. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this thing. Um, Lady Crafts saying nice blocks, T, those mini crumb blocks. Yeah, I love, I, strings and crumbs are one of my favorite blocks to make because I can watch television. I don't have to worry about my quarter inch seam. It's also one of those blocks that I recommend to beginner quilters because you get to practice your quarter inch seam where you don't have to rip it out if it's wrong. And then by the time you keep practicing making while you're making blocks and you squirm all up and go to put the blocks together, you should be a lot better by then. So I kind of like strings and crumb blocks. Minnie saying she's in Lenore. Uh, she's talking to Lady Crafts. I think they're talking to each other. Can't hang out with the grown-ups tonight. Good night, everyone. Good night, Bev. Rochelle says, Miss T, have you fixed your shelving to put your... No, ma'am. <laughs> Dealing with my husband. I'm waiting on him. He gonna get me. But anyway, if it doesn't get done by Wednesday, I'm gonna have to do something else. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something else. So I need help with that, and I can't do it by myself. So... And that's another thing. So I'm still, that's why I had the pop-up shop outside. Um, I'm, I'm excited about hopefully by the end of summer, hopefully I should have a shed in my yard for my stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it, but if I am able to use it and I get an electrician and get it finished, 
I might have a pop-up sale just to do the birthing of my new shed, you know? <laughs> so that'll be cool for my local people. Kevin says that's what friends are for. Uh, I need to do a little editing on my boho. I don't like a few of the black strips that I use. It is going to be a little awkward on how to try and change them. Yeah, you got to pluck them out. You got to go around all the seams and pluck out like an inch away so that you can got enough room to get them back sewed together and then finish those seams off. It's a process because it was just a process for me to get in there and take two pieces out. I was just glad that it was at the bottom of my quilt and I only had to take out three sides as compared to uh, all four sides. So, but they were my, they were my longest strips in that column too, but that it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. Sandra Oldham is here. Linda Denton came in. Uh, Sashiko. Thank you, Lady Crafts. <laughs> Blocking the name. Uh, I haven't used the word in a long time. I had lost my stuff and then I pulled it back out, did a little bit of stitching, but um, um, didn't even think about the name of it. Brenda Perkins says it's storming here in Arkansas. Yeah, it's moving. It was moving northeast. So I'm surprised uh, that it's storming there. So that's, you know, we all need the farmers going to need some rain, too. So it helps them if they've got their fertilizer out, hopefully. Didi says, I have a lot of denim pieces and I'm looking for a quilt pattern I can use them in. And she does a lot of, she does some patterns because she started out traditional. She's kind of like me. I like traditional piecing and then I can throw in some improv here and there. And I know you love improv, but she even did a quilt where she uh, did a, a picnic quilt, she said, for, I don't know if it was her, for a child or a grandchild. I can't remember which one. And she just put all the pockets because she said people kept asking, what do we do with the pockets? What do we do with the pockets? So she just stitched pockets on uh, used pieces of denim. So she still made the background with used pieces. And then she just put pockets on top. It had pockets galore on that quilt. Okay. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, Joe Carmel saying she enjoyed the denim presentation on, on there too. It made her want to make some overalls. <laughs> right. Um, Dee Dee says, I need a quilt pattern with large pieces to use a denim quilt because small pieces would be too thick. Um, the right way saying good night, everyone. Love the t shirt too. Reminds me of home. I'm feeling homesick tonight. So, so sorry about that. Yeah, I want to do the, I've been saving my denim quilt uh, for our, wanting to do the denim quilt, um, cathedral windows quilt. That's what I want to do with mine. And I did finally see somebody that had done it where it was raw edge too. And I like, well, you know what? I kind of like that too. So I haven't decided what I want to do. Betsy is so, so bad. Talk about you can store your fabric here till your shed is ready. I just bet. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, craft with love saying T. I don't know how they do it either in these in those zooms. Yeah, it was a lot. I, I'm, I have, I'm a person that I have such a very short attention span. So. I need stuff like, I need stuff, I guess, right in my face, uh, other people. I don't know if it was because I couldn't, it was a Zoom that didn't show you the other quilters, so I didn't have them to look at. So I ha I didn't have anything to move move around with, so I was getting a little bored. And um, yeah, but I did, I, I got what I, I, it was, everything on there was excellent today, so I have no complaints on, on them. It had nothing to do with them. And it was all about me. I forgot to say this is that, you know, I go to bed at five. So I went to bed at five on Friday, woke up at eight. If you if, if you consider three hours of sleep, because, you know, I didn't sleep all the way through. Um, and so then I had stuff because I, I had to do the pop up shop and then I tried taking a nap 
in the middle of the day before I went and met my friend for dinner. Well, of course, meeting her and not oversleeping was on my brain, even though I had in my phone to wake me up. Uh, I, I was just laying there resting, so not really sleeping. Last night I get in. Uh, I'm handling stuff that I forgot to do. <laughs> uh, I had a pe uh, person that needed an order that I had forgot to do. Uh, they saw me with the pop-up sale and they was like, don't sell my stuff. But I have plenty of stuff. Like I said, I just brought out some stuff. But I had forgotten all about their order. So I got some orders out today. Got some stuff in the mail, some other stuff in the mail. And um, yeah, it's I haven't really had a whole lot of sleep. And then here come the thunderstorm when I'm deciding that I'm going to, or tornado warning. Um, I'm actually trying to get some sleep and now I got to go to the basement. So it's like, okay. <laughs> um, Mer Misty Smith is here from Texas. So welcome, Misty. Hope you're having a great evening. Sue has got to take the dogs out for their last potty break. So I'll see you later, Sue. Um, Dee Dee's saying, figure out what you're going to do with the denim and we can all do it together. Vivian Cavi is leaving. Dee Dee says, look like you got a lot of the optional, you got a lot of the optional blocks this month. Um, I think I'm like around 14, 15 people that have sent blocks in. So we normally get around 17, 18, but then people sometimes have duplicates. So that's where we are with those. Whoever wins, I think I'm going to do one winner because they're small blocks and then they can make a larger quilt with it, I think would be nice just to see how the, because the one thing I like about swapping blocks is that no two blocks are going to be the same. And so um, usually, <laughs> and if people do duplicate the same block, then maybe I'll split them up then. But I do like the fact that uh, you get so many different fabrics from all over the country that it's just nice to look at all the fabric. And I saw that too, T, and was waiting for your reaction. Laughing out loud, is she gonna store, is she gonna store your fabric right? That's Diane talking about Betsy, <laughs> but she don't know who Betsy is. Betsy is uh, a local quilting friend. She's in my scrap quilting club. She's also, uh, I, I, I'm, I quilt for her. She's my customer. I'm finna say I'm her customer, but she's actually my customer. Um, I do her long arm quilting for her. Um, so yeah, I know Betsy very well and she, she means well, <laughs> but it ain't nothing like having somebody else's stash in your face. <laughs> my uh, iron cut off, but I'm going to press this seam anyway. <laughs> Betsy, Betsy is very quiet, but then she's she got the jokes underneath. She's one of those people that's so quiet you gotta listen for the jokes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm just trying to see if any of these seams match up. I think this one does. You know, I'm up against the crumb block. And then I'm going to have to break my seam because I got a partial seam here unless I sew off. I can sew off. Probably be less thread than breaking my thread. And I'm sewing on the wrong side. And now I got to figure out where my stop point is. Because it's uh, a crumb block and I can't see it. I'm just gonna double stitch there and stitch my little self out. Hope it's right so I don't have to, <laughs> you know, take it out one now that I backstitched on it, you know. <laughs> um, San Diego says, I hope my blocks get in on time. I mailed them six days. Oh my gosh, they. Sandy, yours came today. I got yours today. I did not, I have not been to the post office since Wednesday. So yours did come today and I forgot to post. Um, I hope I put them in the bag, put it in the bag. 
All right, so this is section number two that's sold. So Jason, this is the block that you showed in Zoom and I made it bigger. And when I had it sideways, how it should go like this, or like this, I can't remember which way. It was one of these ways that it go because <laughs> I'm on the screen and don't know what's backwards. <laughs> a lot of people said it looked like TV screen. So that's why I turned it. Because once they put the TV screen in my head, I couldn't see anything else. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so we got that. I think that's all the section two. I'll check it when we get there. I'm gonna. So some of these other pieces on section one, I got lots of pieces up here to sew. <sighs> My little mini blocks here are too cute. I got sick and tired of making square and a square block, so I got creative. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> All right. Jason says, looks good. T. Barbara says, I'm working on the clutch bag from yesterday's Zoom. So that's cool. I missed yesterday and I'm so sad that I missed it. I did go and I don't know. They said that the you could watch it, the replays for two days. But I, I couldn't find where the replays were. I guess I, I don't know where that link is for that. So, uh, but I do have the instructions downloaded for the clutch. So, I haven't decided if I'm going to make the casserole carry. It just looked like it was kind of small. I'm wondering if I need to make a bigger square. So, I'll see about that one. But like I said, I wrote down... Uh, some of the instructions and stuff like that so that I could, um, if I want to in the future, I could do some of the stuff. So I want to know, has anybody sold anything instead of just watching? Because some people have been posting stuff in the Facebook group. Looks a little cattywampus, but we'll go. <laughs> it's it's all in a big thing. It's all in a big, huge quilt. It'll be all right. <laughs> So this is what I found so far of section one. Got a lot more to go. I got the fan blowing. I feel like hair is blowing in my face. I forgot to put a scrunchie, get a scrunchie to put on my hair. So. Um, T, you have some beautiful fabrics in those blocks. All of these, um, my background pieces that are black are just from various different manufacturers that had rainbow colors in it, um, black with rainbow colors for the most part. And then all of my Fabrics used inside of the blocks are all K facet blocks or fabrics. And uh, I have finally figured out how to. <laughs> I figured out how to make contrast with them. Because if you just sew caves together and you're cutting small pieces for blocks, they can get muddy very quick. So it was a challenge. But I wanted to use, uh, I had so many K facet um fabrics and so i decided to use that i figured a lot of people were going to do tula or something similar so i was trying to get something different so this is up here i need this to be sold onto there <laughs> but i also need this one sold onto here so I put my pieces, because my pieces have been on my board for a long time, I decided to put pins in. So as I'm yanking stuff off of here, I'm not, 
I'm not um, losing the order of the strips. So, got lots of stuff to sew. I'm getting closer to this, getting this section done. Oh crap, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> I thought maybe, I'm wondering if I just sold another piece that needs to be separate together. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> All right, press this. I'm wondering if my little mini should have had three together instead of, um, instead of four, but we'll see in a minute. Yeah, it should be three together. I can see it on the paper. That's why I need the paper here. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the paper. Um, Just measure your pan and make it fit to you. The thing is, this is a square casserole thing. And all my casseroles are oblong, the rectangles or you know they have the and then they kind of curve around on the edges so i don't have a square casserole dish my family is a large family and when we take dishes we got large pans so that's why i was trying to figure if i was going to take it or make it or not t joy creations is reminding people to hit the thumbs up so thank you ma'am appreciate that all right, I needed to uh, sew this one onto the other two because of how the seams come in. Otherwise, your girl's going to be doing another partial seam. And ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Woo-wee. <laughs> All right, so let's sew this side onto here. And then I'll press the other side that I got the seam in flat afterwards. All right. Who else? Betsy says, my boho is scrappy and I'm trying not to duplicate a piece of fabric other than the background. So I was doing that originally and then I was like, girl, that's going to be hundreds of pieces. So I stopped. Let me look at this, because I think I may have sewn this piece to the wrong piece. Let's see. Nope, they match up. So it's right. Woo-wee, honey child. <laughs> this is a, it, I, I do like this, though. I like a challenge, but it's like putting together a puzzle, this quilt. So I do love a challenge, and this one going to keep you on your toes right here. Making sure you um, sewing the right pieces in the right order. You got to be paying attention at all times, not sewing and chatting and reading. <laughs> like I'm doing. All right, I'll show you three of my little minis here in a second. Let me press it first. So it's presentable. I don't know what Janice Wyatt is typing here. Don't know what that means. Your quilt for your friend sounds happy. Draw around the pan for a pattern. Hi guys, heading home. I'm gonna listen while I drive. That's Joe Carmel. So, so here are some little ones. 
instead of doing square in the square blocks or a circle, what else did they have us do? Four patches. I think they had us do four patches. I know I've done four patch, but this is what I'm doing now. The right way, said, I just sold a small lap clip for my dear friend who has Alzheimer's. I'm calling it You Are My Sunshine. It's blue and white with yellow sun in the middle with rays going out. Now, that sounds beautiful. I actually retired from the Department of Mental Health, so I'm kind of partial to mental illness. All right, so now that I got that piece out, I can put it where it belongs. I'm still trying to figure out where this other square is going. Do I have a, I'm almost wondering, do I have an extra square or something? I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know. We'll see in a minute because this lined up to here. I think I got an extra square up here. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I picked up the wrong square. That's what I did. I think I just had one of my extra squares because this uh, little four patch, I had all four corners tape down so that it would flatten out because you know when you make this 16 patch let me let you see it <laughs> this 16 patch was nothing but seams on the back so i was trying to get the seams to lay down i think i just picked up the wrong block it wasn't supposed to be there but now that it's there it's there well i can just put it up here with this <laughs> Just picked up the wrong piece. Okay, now these two pieces go together. We just gonna make it work. So I just tend, I'm not pinning. I, when I have long pieces, I start sewing about an inch or two down, and then I find the middle, make sure I hold my hand there and stop sewing when my hand gets up there. Then I go to the end again, make sure, put my hand back in the middle, and it just eases in if I have any easing to do. But it makes it so that I don't get to the bottom and my edge pieces are two different sizes. Now, if I'm teaching a beginner class, I wouldn't do that. So if you're a beginner, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't wanna mess up somebody's work. Good night, Judy. Donna says, Tucker and I are working on crinkle cut Free work for tomorrow. Thank you for keeping us company in the big screen. <laughs> That's nice. They've been doing some uh, different sew alongs. So that's nice. Oh, I can press this one. I put starch on these, but they don't. They're not holding it very well. Um, some of the cave prints are so thin. I don't understand why their fabric is so thin to be such good design, but some of it is thin and it just frays. All right, so now I can add this. I put a pin back in there, didn't I? When I'm moving the board a lot, my pieces fall off. I got the fan going. It blows pieces off. Um, so I've been sticking some pins in here. All right. I'm going to put a pin on this because I got a little easing I need to do. Best way to handle that is to pin it.
then I know exactly where my easing is going to happen and not on the edge. <laughs> Janet says, sorry, I almost dropped my lap pad. Oh, and I guess my fingers must have typed. I'm like, I don't know what that means. She's giving us GPS co concord. She's telling us where to come meet her. <laughs> or is that where my money you stashed from when you won the lottery for me? <laughs> I told my family that if I ever win the lottery, by the time they know that I won, I'm going to be long gone and I'm just going to give you coordinates to where I buried a hole and put your money. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm long gone. Judy says, good night all on the East Coast. I have to get up tomorrow to take my daughter to the airport. So traveling mercies for her all right so we put this one back it's so pretty it's coming together really good i got after this seam i have three sec sections so and i'm I'll probably just stitch on some of them scraps over there because I don't want to break my thread. I like my thread in my quilts. It feels like it's hot in my house. I don't have the AC on, but it's feeling kind of muggy after all of this rain. Um, and it was at a college where they play backer ball. I purchased from 21 vendors. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you have any money, Rose? <laughs> that is funny. I don't think I've ever went to a quilt show and purchased from 21 vendors. <laughs> That's funny. All right. I need this piece to sew this to, so I don't know. We'll find some scraps in here I've put in here. Let's see. This is like a Tri-Rex piece. Trying to see if I had some small ones in here. I just put these in here and didn't look. So uh, I'm painting the Piper now. Well. We'll just sew this on here. I try to waste the least amount of fabric I can, even when I'm sewing strings and crumbs. <laughs> I am such a, I don't know what I am. I got so much fabric. I don't know why I'm still worried about strings and crumbs. That's what I don't get. <laughs> but I still do. Had the nerve to make me break out in the hot flash. I've been hot anyway, though. I think it's the rain. It's Let's see. Sybarita James came in. Hey. Timmy Boyd says, glad to be new to this channel. Tucker Nace is the reason I subscribe. I always watch his channel. So thank you, Timmy. Thank you, Tucker. <laughs> That's really nice. Like I said, I uh, a lot of the uh, YouTubers, we all communicate. We 
chat and we share channels, tell people about the other channels that I'm aware who have channels. I don't know who all have channels just by your channel name. But if I know you have a channel, I do let people know that you have a channel. So thank you so much, Tammy, for subscribing. Hopefully you subscribed. <laughs> And Dorsey is reminding her to hit the thumb, hit the bell and subscribe and all that good stuff. Cause that's what Darcy does. <laughs> and, um, and she also welcomed her to the channel. That's really nice. Remo says they had awesome stuff. One vendor, he had a line named Tucker. He dyes fabrics and designs ruler. So that's cool. All right. So this one here goes like that. Cause I know where my little minis go don't have to look that one up but i do need to put this in the right place i need a pen when i have match points i do match up my match points because i want my stuff to look neat that way but if it doesn't have a match point i don't worry about a pen and then i have a match point here so You'll randomly see me using pens, so I like to explain what I'm doing. They like she used she didn't she got this shorter seam. She didn't uh, use pens on the long one, and now she's using pens and put a lot of pens in this uh, smaller section. That's because I'm matching uh, points or where the blocks intersect each other. So. I have to go in, look, and see who you all talking to, if it's me or somebody else. All right. One match point down. I got one more piece to put on here before I can call this section one done so we will do that and then we get to lay out section three because i've done section two um i'm gonna have the nerve to save this little piece <laughs> oh, it's about a one inch square <laughs> Sad, sad, sad. Trying to make sure I use the smallest piece I have. Yep. And I'm just making crumb blocks while I'm still piecing my other units. They'll go into a different quilt. Or the back, who knows? All right, let's turn this over. And my piece is getting too big to go on the board now. And then press this piece. Severita says, I worked on my quilt project last week, so that's good. Anybody that hasn't shared what project you're working on, I'd love to know. I uh, never did see if anybody had said they uh, completed any of the So Creative Lounge projects. One more piece and then I'll show it to you. Yeah, because this here matches up down here. And it doesn't have match points anywhere else. Pull the wrong block. <laughs> that's all right i i know i got enough it'll get used later on i know i need it okay match point here find about center make sure my edges are lined
get my pen out of there. So I had it all the way in there this time. I wasn't joking. All right. So this section one is done. It's 928 already. Goodness gracious. Time is flying when you're having fun. I'll press this with a steam iron with some um, heat now. Um, let's see. People are putting in what they're working on. That's great. Um, June Hansen came in. Hey, June. Um, she's working on a baby quilt. See, Verita says today was spent at the car dealership for car repairs. I will be back at it tomorrow. So I got to take mine in just to get oil change and stuff like that. I'm thinking I'll probably wait in the, you know, the lights on. It's a little irritating. But I'm thinking I might make an appointment for after I come back from Paducah, Kentucky. So I'll have good gas, a good uh, oil in there when I come back home from a trip instead of doing it before. Um, that came on this week. So it was like, hello. And then now when you call the car dealerships, I used to could get in like within a day or two. Now it's like, sometimes it's up to a month to get in. It just depends on how busy they are. Um, some of them closed here. And so, you know, they're absorbing a whole nother dealerships clients into their system so it takes a lot longer now covid was not kind a lady crafts is working on a wall hanging just finished knitting a sweater vest melissa says what time tomorrow oh they working she's talking to don and tucker about times rochelle says good night everyone I have to make dinner for my husband so good night i haven't even eaten that's the other thing i had a boiled egg this morning because i was in the lecture and then I ate a bag of pretzels, okay? A little, a snack bag of pretzels. So yeah, I need to eat as well. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. I have no desire to fix myself something to eat, which is just crazy. <laughs> Claudette's working on a bag for a friend's birthday. That's beautiful. Claudette makes beautiful anything. So her, and her bags are really nice. Diane was sewing early on a messenger with Vicki Robles and we are working on the same quilt. So that's nice. Uh, Betsy is working on a charm club quilt called Goose in the Pond. So that's cute. I saw she has some half square triangles. Uh, Patricia Priest says she volu I volunteer hand quilting two days a week and my friends are needing me to make them pouches. So that is what I'm doing. So that's nice as well. I don't like hand quilting. I don't know why. It doesn't relax me. It mostly stresses me. So I will never be joining any of those groups, <laughs> unfortunately, unless something changed later in my life. But it's been going strong like that for a long time. Judy is working on Nana quilt and she's changing her oil next week. So that's good. Uh, not now designs is I'm kidding up projects for this week's retreat in Hamilton, Missouri. So that's nice. And she says, uh, I'll be sure to honk at you as I pass through STL. Ha, <laughs> that's really uh, nice. Now that's, oh girl, uh, you don't mind taking a journey, child. I, I, I admire that, that she ain't letting nothing slow her down. She do what she want to do no matter where it's at. So that's cool. Uh, she came to my very first retreat that was in Hamilton, Missouri. And uh, she drove all that by herself. I was really impressed with her. Uh, Janice says, I completed a memory quilt that included four cross-stitch pictures. My client's mom stitched back in the 80s turned out cute. Now, that's nice. That's awesome. I like. I'm one of those memory type people, multi uh, projects going into one type thing too. So that's cool. And Tucker's giving you all the time. Say they're going on at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So that's 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Oh my God, that's late. Y'all up late. Oh my goodness. Oh, morning. Morning. Okay. Cause I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. 
So that will be 10 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, Tucker. <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> um, and we talked about uh, Tiffany before. Um, um, uh, Tiffany of Tiffany's Quilting Life. Um, her son has, uh, ha they have a tragedy in her family where her son passed. And so they are, you know, if you want to send her a card or something, they've got their information over in the description box over there. So I forgot to mention that. I mentioned on Wednesday about Tiffany being off due to family emergency, uh, but she came out on Thursday and said what it was. And it's just horrific. So if you all got a man to just go over and send her some comforting words would be nice. Um, it's, it, I'm sure all of you parents and grandparents here know how you would be feeling if something like that uh, happened in your family. It's just awful. He was only 17 years old. So, <laughs> Dorothy is also reminding people if you're coming in or going out to make sure you hit the thumbs up and she'll see you. She says she has to get going. She'll see you all on Wednesday. So good night, Darcy. Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, taking care of the thumbs up for me and the subscribes. Uh, Remo says, I'm getting ready to start sewing blocks once I do a load of laundry. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a tragedy, and I, I don't know. So she's... She's hoping for people to watch old videos. She's also, this is Tiffany. Um, um, she doesn't know when she'll be back. I just pray that she takes the time that she needs. And I hope that finances don't make her come back any sooner. Because she just, it, it was just horrible to see her video. Um, so, um, and Laura Lynn still is sick. Uh, Diane57 is saying. And Vicki Lemire is in hospice. I did mention Vicki Lemire in hospice, and I uh, had given her GoFund information on the Wednesday chat. I did have somebody today send me a, a thing because everybody doesn't do online payments or want to hook up into all of these different platforms. So I was not a part of GoFundMe, and I always tried to avoid it. Most people I knew personally, so I could just cash app it or Venmo it to them. But I did go ahead and sign up. And once I sign up, then I'm going to back my way back out of there. I had to stop them from sending me email after email after email. I bet I was getting about four emails a day from them. So I had to stop that. Uh, but I do, I will make the any donations that were given to me. I also will put over there and make sure that they know it's from somebody else. I'll just put either your first name and initial or your initials or something like that. Um, and Sibabita says that she's praying for Tiffany also. So Brenda says she just finished it. I don't know what she finished. <laughs> she got an exclamation point on the back. T and all T quarters, I'm going to say goodnight. I can't seem to keep my eyes open. I ate too much and it's taking me down now. This is a busy day of fun. Again, thanks for the birthday wishes. So bye-bye. <laughs> Larissa, have fun. Yeah, Diane says she cried for Tiffany. I said it was awful. There was absolutely no joy in watching that video whatsoever. And I refused to go back and watch it. It was just just grief everywhere. And she was just trying to get through. You know, when you have a business and it's a public business, and if you just disappear, then you think people are going to think something happened to you. And um, another thing that happened to me, yesterday late after i came home from the cardinals game i was scrolling through the internet and for some reason on facebook i am not getting notifications from groups that i used to get notifications from i'm not getting posts from people that i use, usually read stuff from i'm getting stuff and some of it i'm not really interested in but the stuff i used to like or comment on i don't get those anymore and then i see a post come through from uh, the Iowa Star Quilts group, which was Cindy, uh, Cynthia Drania from Iowa of Iowa Star Quilts. I found out she passed last month. Now, they posted, 
I think what happened, if she posts, it was letting me know if she posts, but it wasn't letting me know if other people post, which other people didn't normally post a lot in there unless they were showing a quilt that she made the, of her patterns. She was an excellent pattern designer. I've met her, I don't know how many years ago. I want to say like 2011, maybe. Um, I went, I was doing a quilt lecture in Kansas and one of the quilters there was uh, part of the crew that got me to come there. And when I got there, she saw my style of quilting and she told me about uh, Cynthia of Iowa Star. And so I was going to the Paducah quilt show from there and she told me she's vending there. And I said, oh, okay, then I'll look, look her up. And when I went there and I, she was doing a demonstration, so I waited. And after she got through with the uh, demonstration, I said, hey, Cynthia, I'm, I was told, um, I said, hey, Cynthia, I was told you're going to be my best friend. And she looked at me like, how do you even know who I am? Because <laughs> she didn't have on a name badge. It says Iowa Star is her name badge. And uh, it was funny. And so from then on out, uh, we have been best buds. Every time I go to shows, she helped me. Uh, she, she, the lady I was vending for or helping vend uh, at quilt shows was one of her friends. And so uh, we instantly became friends. If she was in a, if she was at a quilt show, she made sure that I had a ticket. I didn't have to pay to get in. My name, it might be some kind of weird name on there because she would just put weird names on there because she would just get badges for people that were coming through and then always knowing that she was going to have a badge there for me. So I might be Sharon walking around a quilt show and people that are looking for tea quilts go, well, her name is Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> but I would use a badge and then I'd take it and give it back to her or some just in case somebody want to come on a different day. I wouldn't take the badge home because I think Paducah goes Wednesday through s Saturday and they break down on Sunday, I think. I don't think they do Sunday. But um, I was just really heartbroken to know that she had passed and I didn't even have a clue. And so I did contact her husband on Facebook because I wasn't friends with him, although I do know him and he knows me. Uh, it was a time that when I was vending, she she refused to let me buy a room. Um, they had a suite and the suite had um, a sofa. And she was like, you're just going to sleep here because it was all at the last minute. The hotel was full and they didn't have any more um, rooms in that hotel. And she let me stay there two nights out of the uh five or six that they were there because they come a day early and then they stay an extra day to pack. So I was really heartbroken to know that she had passed and I had, I had no clue. And then I felt really bad because I know the husband very well and I hadn't even reached out to him and he didn't know how to reach out to me. And he's not very efficient on Facebook to know how to go message people. He just know when he gets notifications, he's clicking on those, but he doesn't know how to initiate. So I felt really, really bad that I didn't um, know that something had happened to her. I, I felt awful. And then I was up. That was another reason I didn't sleep last night uh, because I was up. So and the ironic thing is I had tagged her in a Facebook post where somebody was saying a pattern was somebody else's. And I let them know that originally it was her pattern. And I've since learned through copyright infringement that it's harder to get a, a judgment. You have what's copyright, they say in patterns, which I didn't I don't feel like it was right. I just think her person, her publisher didn't want to go after them. But her. Um, they said that the directions themselves, not necessarily the quilt itself is copyright. So it's the directions that are copyright. So the publisher wouldn't go after the person that had produced one of her patterns and put it in one of their books. So, but yeah, it was just, it was just, I had a hard night last night finding that out. So it's a lot going on this week. Hers happened in March, but for me, it's this week. So it's a lot of things happening.
go. I'm sorry. I don't. Laura Lynn sounds like it's something serious with her because she's been off for a while now. I feel bad about that. Brenda Foley is making, oh, she's making yo-yos also. Okay. Sheila's working on the elephant abstraction quilt. So that's cool. I got some things like that I need to be working on. I just haven't gotten started yet. Craft. Who is this? Okay, so she was saying good night to craft with love. Okay. Brenda says scroll up laughing a lot. I went to a local quilt shop, took bag class. Oh, the downtown by Auntie's too. Okay. You just finished the bag. So yes, honey, any of these bags, when you get into the good des bag designers, they're complicated. It takes a while. It's a lot of steps. Calling it a night from Lady Crab. She says, take care, everyone. Good night. See you all next time. They still don't know what's wrong with Laura. Uh, yeah, I saw that, that they still don't know what's wrong with her. So this is section one of my uh, boho heart. Well, it's section one of, <laughs> of part of the quilt. I press one of my seams the opposite direction. So let me correct that. Just part of it. Y'all know I'm one of them people who like the back of my quilts to look as good as the front. <laughs> I have my own little obsessions. <laughs> like we cannot do that all right so that's section one i'm gonna take it off um and i can't sew any sections together because i have to take pictures first what's my next section i think it's done Okay, so I got section two done, and now I need to do section three. Oh, I know what I got to do too, is that I can't put this away because I need to know what line these, the lines of my fabrics going across here, they follow down the line. So I need to leave this out. So... What I'm gonna do is fold it so I can see the stuff here and then put some pins in here to keep it on the board. So I can keep track of my lines. And then I'm gonna slide this underneath because I don't have blocks picked out for this next section. So I'll know if they contrast or not from the row above. <laughs> um, oh, so they, uh, Yo Patty G saying that they did a uh, live and Laura Lynn was on the live. So that's good. I'm, that's good. That's good to know that she was at least able to do that. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Silverita. <laughs> flat no seams on the back right i had one that where i was pressing the seam allowance to the left and it had kicked to the right it's like oh no so yeah it's a lot going on in the quilting industry with um well-known well not i don't want to say well-known but you know people know who some of us are so um well-known enough <laughs> uh with the quilter so it's a lot going on and then that's just the stuff we know. It's a lot of stuff we don't know. So, all right, I don't need this. I don't need that. I need, okay, I need a six. I'm like, I need two four-inch blocks. What are they doing that at? <laughs> it's like, I don't have any. It's already done. <laughs> all right, so I need a six-inch block here. And do I want to turn this? Oh, it just looks better this way, though. Six inch block here, an eight inch, and then another six inch. No, two eight inches. 
Wait a minute. I don't have two eight inch blocks. Was I supposed to frame a block? <laughs> okay. Did I like lose a block or something? I have this block. I'd rather put it down here, I think. I don't think it really matters. Okay. And then I need this strip here in the middle. All right, I'm trying to figure out where's my eight inch block. Like, where they do that at? I counted every block that I made and said I have enough. That's weird. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I was supposed to frame one of these blocks. Weird, weird, weird. Okay. One, two, three, four more six inch blocks. So let's see how many more I need. The joys of quilting live. <laughs> <laughs> one two three yes so i need three more after this so i was supposed to take one of these blocks and put a frame on it and i did not do that i just did not follow through so maybe i'll do the one i made the bigger thread spool i made one in a four inch made one in a six inch so maybe I'll put that. I also have a string or a crumb block. I could put a one inch border on. I don't think I've ever bordered any of the other ones. I did make a jar block though. So. Hmm. And this one has the T in the middle. Maybe I'll do that because I keep forgetting to put the T in the middle. We'll do that. So I need to frame a block. So you know what that means when it's 10 minutes to go and I got to pick fabrics and, you know, I think we're done <laughs> sewing for tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I forgot to do that because I'm like, I counted all my blocks. Diane says, read your paper, T. Right. I don't want to be ripping. So I just went and counted what I need in, to finish off the quilt. So apparently one of these I was going to make, uh, just put a frame on it and forgot. So I need to pull out all the fabrics. I got to cut frames and all of that. And I'm, I don't feel like doing that right now. So it looks like we're done sewing for today. Um, I could sew two seams and that's it. So I might do that. <laughs> um, and Diane saying that Vicki Lemire went to lots of channels and it's pretty well known. Yeah, I hadn't seen her on my channel in a long time. And what what year was that? It was like 2018 or something that she won a, a prize for me. And I, I, cause I went to look and see and I hadn't seen or heard anything from her. It was just weird that she kind of disappeared. So, um, I, um, just try to do the right thing because I, when her name, somebody sent it to me that she had a GoFundMe, one of, one of the tea quilters that is also in other groups. Cause I had no idea anything was going on with her. And so she sent me a link to the GoFundMe. I made a donation and then I said, okay, I'll share it here. If people want to donate, they can, um, just trying to help the family out. It seems like her and her husband were living on minimum income and they didn't have money for funeral. Didn't sound like they had a life insurance because otherwise, why would you be doing a GoFundMe? Um, so I just feel bad that, you know, 
they thought she was going to have six weeks or something. And it looks like she's going to hospice now. So when you're going into hospice, you don't really have that long. So uh, it's kind of weird when people are doing GoFundMes for somebody's funeral costs and they haven't passed yet. But when you know it's happening and no funeral home is going to have a service without you having your bill paid in full, which is sad. It's all, it's Death is sad all around because you get screwed even in death. That's just horrible. And so, yeah, she won't last a month in hospice. I think she's only going to have days if she's in hospice. They, they normally say a month, but most people don't last that many, not even a week in hospice. Um, hospice is only uh, doing drugs for pain. They're not doing any type of care. Like when you're in palliative care, they're still doing some type of care. But in hospice, they're not doing anything other than giving you drugs for pain to keep you comfortable. So most of the time you're knocked out um, with the type of drugs that they give. So it's not a good thing right now. Super Rita, what is the name of the pattern book you have? Are you talking about Boho Heart? I, uh, that's what we're working on out of this book here, Boho Hearts. Um, I still have probably one or two left to sell. Um, it's by Jen Kingwell. And then if you buy from me, you also get access to all the stuff that I'm uploading in the Facebook group as well. So if anybody is interested in doing a Boho Heart quilt, you can do that. And then um, once I know your uh, Facebook name, then you can go once you pay and then I know your Facebook name. So let me know what that is, because sometimes people uh, name on YouTube is different from their name on Facebook. So I need to make sure I let the right person in. So, OK. Um, and Diane says, yep, yeah, that is what I think, too. Yeah, it's horrible. And since COVID. You know, everything has gone up. Funerals were already, to me, super expensive. And now they're even more expensive because of the precautions that COVID has placed on them as well. But, and it's just astronomical now. And I remember one time when I was organizing a funeral service and the person had life insurance. So they, they knew we had life insurance, but they didn't know how much. And it was amazing that when we found, told when they gave us the bill, it was almost twice what the life insurance was. And then when I told them to take off this and take off that and take off this and how much their life insurance actually was, it's amazing how they can adjust numbers to make sure that they can still do it. So if you could have done it for what the life insurance policy base was, then why is things so overpriced? And then they want to act like they're doing you a favor when actually they're all kicking you in your butt when you've lost a loved one. It's not, I, I don't, I'm not saying all funeral homes because I know somebody in there really loves their job and do it right. But for the most part, I'm, and especially in lower income communities, <laughs> um, it's, it's really horrible what they do in the, in the funeral industry here in St. Louis. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you can have two people go in and request the same services, and they're going to come out with two different prices. It's amazing. Uh, we just had a memorial two weeks ago for my sister-in-law. She was cremated, and that's going up too. Yeah, and I remember uh, my brother um, more preferred to be cremated. He didn't even want a funeral service or memorial service. So I figured, okay, don't do a funeral. We'll do a memorial service, and then we'll just have an urn. Um, trying to honor his wishes because he wasn't a people person to have people looking at him while he was alive. So I knew that he wouldn't do that. But with the large size of my family, if we had not done anything at all, I feel like we would have done a disservice to him for all the love my family has for each other. So, um, yeah, we did organize a memorial service for him, but we did not do a funeral. And it was a, it was still costly. Uh, my niece and I, uh, like I said, I told you all about this before, where we had paid the majority of that. So, um, yeah, it's no joke. Everything is expensive. You used to could cremate somebody for five hundred dollars, and and they give you the ashes, and you're kind of done. Not anymore. You got to still pay 
a mortician to come get the bodies and all of this stuff. It's like if they were in the hospital, you already have pro pro uh, now pronounced them deceased. And but you have to have a mortician go get them, not a crematory. It's crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> so, oh, God. It's horrible. That's why I told my daughter already what to do uh, if something happened to me. You know, just go to my old job and tell them that I died because that's the least insurance policy that I have. Take them the least insurance policy I have. And then she'll have access to my account where she can get whatever else she needs. If she need any, because I'm telling you, they'll make adjustments based on most. As long as you got some policy that's going to pay the true expenses and they still make money, they're going to adjust the fees of that funeral. I'm telling you. And then I even told him, I said, well, we don't need a. Um, we don't need a. Um, what do you call it? like a chauffeur and the limousine? We don't need a limousine. We'll just drive our own car. They said, you know what? They threw the limousine in. You know why? Because it makes them look good. They it makes it lets people know doing the thing that they got limos for when people are deceased. But they threw it in for us being kind, you know. We'll just throw it in. <laughs> well, I knew why they threw it in because they don't want to be on the streets without having a limo in their um, you know, in the entourage, you know. There's something else. I'm just, there's something else here. I don't know what's going on in you all's area, but there's something else here. I can tell you that. <laughs> we only got a minute. I don't have to sew. I've been talking. <laughs> Sad. I found out that if you have a funeral on a weekend, it costs more than a Monday through Friday. Yes, and a burials too cost more on Saturdays. And most times people have them on the weekend because of family having to come from out of town that are working. So most people do have a lot. It's a lot of services on Saturday. Most people can't get off work, especially when you have a large family. That was uh, year 2000. I was I was like overwhelmed with how many people in my family and friends had passed. And it was it was too much. And. uh it was a lot of traveling, a lot of taking off work. And the last person in that year that passed, I couldn't even go to their funeral because they weren't immediate family and I couldn't get off. It was a lot going on at work. And because they weren't my immediate family, they wouldn't give me the time off. So I couldn't even go to that one. And it was in Alabama. It was for my uncle. But they, it has to be a sibling or your mother or father for them to uh, let you off no matter what. Mm -hmm. but yeah so it looks like I'm not sewing I'm at a stall I forgot to do a step that's what happens when you're doing all of this stuff I'm trying to get stuff done so I can come in here and sew and then realize I missed a step so I had made I had made an extra six inch block on purpose saying that I'd frame it, but I didn't know which one I guess I was going to frame. And then I forgot that I had said that when I first made the block. So now I'm sitting here having to frame out a block so that I can finish section three. So we did get through section one. Section one was a bear. It had a lot of pieces. And then we got section two done pretty easy. So section three will go fast once I frame this block because it's only four blocks that are going together. That's pretty easy. And then section four and five is sewn together. And it's going to be a nightmare, too. So <laughs> I'll probably, I don't know if I'm going to, we'll see what happens when I come back. I'm going to try to get the bottom part piece, the background pieces, because that's the hardest part of section four and five. So. Mm -mm. So my brother saying good night, everyone. Stay safe still. So I'm going to go ahead and end here. I'm going to figure out something to eat. I'm going to then, unfortunately, probably go to sleep if I get something to eat because I'm tired. It's been a long day. And uh, I don't normally go to sleep early. 
but I'm kind of tired, but I know if I don't eat something before I go to sleep, I'm going to wake up at two looking real crazy. <laughs> and I really don't want to cook at 2 a.m. So uh, we're going to go ahead and end here, guys. You all, I hate that I'm ending on such a sour note as well. So I apologize for that. But like I said, you just, if you're not aware, it's just a lot going on in the quilting industry right now. So Y'all just pray for everybody in the quilting community. Keep everybody in your prayers and in your heart. And uh, nothing, wish nothing but the best for people. We've lost track of that as a, a community. That's why I really love, um, since COVID, what has happened in the quilting community and the live chats and how much people are caring for each other here. And strangers going over to donate to Vicky's uh, GoFundMe was really nice. So. Um, that's what we're doing. And so that's part of it is some of it, even though through death, you have some joy in various different ways. We're not even going to get into that because that I can go on again, but, um, just keep people in your prayers, keep them close, be nice to people. Uh, that doesn't mean they have, you have to let them abuse you or anything, but just treat them kind when they're just acting out anyway. <laughs> uh, you don't have to do anything for them. You just keep yourself calm. So y'all stay blessed, be safe and quilt out. We'll be back Wednesday, 7 PM central standard time for one hour chat. I had so many topics I wrote down that we were going to do and I've lost my papers that I could have pulled from. So it'll be a surprise when I put up the live chat for Wednesday, what we're going to talk about. Okay. <laughs> Bye everybody. Stay blessed.